Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Let's read it together. It'll be on the screen. So we'll all read the same version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3 tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Some, a few years ago, uh, Rebecca and I had been in a place of ministry for quite some time. Um, we enjoyed where we had been working. Uh, we enjoyed living there. We enjoyed the, the people there. And uh, again, we had been there for for quite some time, over 20 years, and our, our children uh, were, were born there, and that was the only place uh, that they had ever known a, as home, and uh, we, were, we were good. We, we were comfortable, but after a little while, I started feeling the, this kind of stirring, this rumbling um, in my spirit, and uh, you know, if I had to describe it, it it's kind of like when the, the mama bird starts putting twigs out in the nest uh, to make the baby birds uh, fly away. And that's the kind of way I was feeling, just, just this poking and prodding. And I'm, I'm like, uh, Lord, you can just quit that. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable where I am. You know, God doesn't listen to us, however. And, and so it just be, kept stirring in my heart. So Rebecca and I prayed about it and sought the Lord and and he kept trying to tell us what he, what he wanted to do, what was our next step. And we kept saying, okay, nope, we're, we're not hearing right. We, we, we need to fast and pray some more because um, this, this can't be the voice of the Lord. Um, but finally, uh, we got to a place that said, okay, Lord, you're obviously speaking to us. You want us to do something. Um, you want us to make a move. So, Lord, we submit to your will, we submit to your way, and we make this move. Um, and God worked everything out. He, he, his, all the chips fell where they needed to. Everything fell into the place for our move. Everything was wonderful, and we took off and moved halfway across the country to a different place of ministry. And God just said to us, trust me. And so we did. You know, the concept of trust is important in Scripture. We're told throughout the Bible to trust God, to obey God, to have faith in God. We are instructed to trust God simply because He is God. In Isaiah 55, 8, He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our faith is built on trust. We trust that God sent his son into our world. We trust that Jesus was born of a virgin, walked on this earth, lived a sinless life, was crucified as the atonement for our sin. We trust that he rose again uh, on the third day that he ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God and reigns forever and ever. Abraham had to trust God when God told him to sacrifice his son. Moses had to trust God when God told him to lead uh, Israel out of the bondage of Pharaoh and across the wilderness. Joshua had to trust God when God told him to lead Israel in marching around the walls of Jericho. Daniel had to trust God when he was thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to trust God when thrown into the fiery furnace. And on and on down throughout the pages of scripture, men and women of God were called to trust him in the face of uncertainty, in the face of persecution, even in the face of death. Trust God. What God wants from each of us is our unwavering obedience to his word and to his will. He wants us to be completely sold out and surrendered to him. And that takes trust. 
Full devotion to Jesus Christ requires us to trust him. So let's take a look at this simple four-line scripture passage this morning and unpack it just a little bit. First of all, I want you to see in this passage the principle. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. By definition, to trust is to have confidence in, to be secure in something. Uh, A few years ago, uh, when my son was much younger and shorter, um, we were at an indoor uh, water park, um, and it had this really high slide that, that twisted and turned and came down. And Jordan, being a, a young boy, he wanted to go down that slide. He, he wanted to experience that slide. So he got up to the top, and then he wavered a bit. Um, his, his resolve wavered. And I had climbed up to the top of the slide with him. And, and there was some back and forth between us. And, you know, you'll be okay, Jordan. Just, just, just go. You'll be okay. But, but I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of scary up here. And, you know, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. In fact, I'll go down the slide with you. We'll go down the slide together. Still this look of insert, uncertainty. And I said, do you trust me? Yes then let's go. So we went down the slide, and there was screaming and yelling all the way down the slide, and, and we, but we made it to the bottom, we, and we got to the bottom. We plunged into the water and, and came up, back up out, and the first thing he said, I got to do that again. <laughs> he trusted me. He trusted me, and his trust in me helped him overcome his fear and let me take him down the slide then his confidence grew. He trusted me. And that's what God calls us to do, to put our confidence in him, to trust in the Lord. But the verse doesn't stop there. It says trust in the Lord, but then it goes on. It quantifies the trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We might be tempted to glibly say, yes, Lord, I trust you. Sure, I trust you, God. But then the second part of that phrase rings out, with all your heart. With all my heart? That requires us to step back and to think about it a little bit more. That's a much deeper level of trust. I I can trust him a little, especially when the stakes are low when it doesn't require me to risk too much. I can trust him then. I can trust him a little bit more when I see him following through on a promise or or answering a prayer. But what about when the situation is different? What about when the need is much bigger? What if the stakes are a lot higher? Jesus, I just don't trust you. You don't trust me? No, I mean, I want to trust you. I just don't. (laughs) I have an exercise that I think will really help you. Oh, okay. Stand here and face this direction. Mm -hmm. Now, do you trust me? Uh, No, I just said I don't trust you. Well, this is all part of the exercise. All right. Whenever I ask you if you trust me, you say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't. It's practice. Okay. So, do you trust me? (laughs) Yes, Jesus. I trust you. Now, fall back. Are you going to catch me? Don't worry about that. Okay, that's the part I'm worried about. (laughs) You can do this, okay? Just trust me. Trust you. Fall back. Okay, well, Jesus, I trust you. Yes, I do trust you. I'm going to fall back. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Let's try this again. Just face this direction and keep your feet planted, all right? Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Okay, I'm going to do it. All right. I'm really going to do it. (laughs) Good. Ah! Oh, Jesus, you're really coming! I didn't think you were going to catch me, but you did! Oh, that was great! That was great! You're ready for level two! Level two, here I come, baby! Woo! Whoa! Whoa. Okay, hold it. (laughs) Oh, you know what? You're too close. You need to move back. 
<laughs> ah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one's a little bit different, Laura. Oh, okay. Uh, stand here. Uh huh. But face me. Woo! Forward fall. Okay. I can do that. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um, wait for my signal. Oh, right. The Jesus signal. <laughs> yes, the Jesus signal. Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus. I trust you so much. Good. Fall back. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> Especially when you do it. <laughs> Seriously? Of course. Okay, Jesus, I don't know if you noticed this, but there is nobody over there. I know it looks that way to you. It looks that way. It is that way. You can do this, Laura. Just trust me <laughs> and fall back. Jesus, I can't do that. We can do it together. I can't. You can. I won't. To trust God with all your heart is to trust him with all that you are. To trust God with all your heart requires a deep down inner knowledge of who God is. It's more than just some intellectual knowledge. It's, it's more than a head knowledge. It's deeper than a casual acquaintance. It's not enough to know about God. You need a heart knowledge of who God is. More than knowing about God, you need to know God on a personal, intimate level. In Philippians 3, Paul says, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ. To trust God on this level requires a knowledge and an understanding of who he is. He is the shepherd of our souls. He is our savior. He is the one who has redeemed us by his blood. The one who loves us with an everlasting love. He's the one who showers us with mercy. He's the one rich in grace. He's the one who delivers us from evil. He is provider. He is our sustainer. He is our keeper. He is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the all-powerful one, the creator and sustainer of all that is, the one who knows the end from the beginning, the one who was and is and is to come. He is the one who is unchanging, who never wavers, the one in whom there is no shadow of turning. He is faithful and true. He is God. There is none other like him. And you can trust him. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. And he helps me. True trust in God must be wholehearted trust. To only put part of your trust in God is to fail to trust him at all. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with every part of you. Embrace God with all that you are, heart, soul, mind, and strength. That kind of love expresses itself in trust, complete trust. Trusting God with all your heart is a childlike, unwavering confidence and the Father's wisdom, faithfulness, and love. Let me say that again. Trusting God with all your heart is a childlike, unwavering confidence in the Father's wisdom, faithfulness, and love. The principle is this. Trust the Lord with all your heart. The next part of verse 5 of our text today goes on to explain what that looks like. I'm calling it the process the first part of the process is lean not on your own understanding. Many want to take the attitude of, I trust God plus. I trust God plus my job. I trust God plus my bank account. I trust God plus my health. I trust God plus myself. I trust God plus my education. I trust God plus my own abilities. I trust God plus blank, and you fill in the blank. As I was preparing for this message, I did a Google search uh, on quotes about trust. 
Some were pretty good, others questionable, and some had me shouting, no, just no. Here's a few of those. Without self-trust, we can never become wise because we will continue to look outside of ourselves for the answer. A confident person exhibits self-trust. They trust that their decisions are the best ones. Trust yourself above anyone else. You are the best judge of your own actions. No, no, no. The very next verse in the passage that we read from Proverbs, verse 7 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Isaiah 55, 12 says, Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. And Romans 1, 21 explains the fallacy in that kind of thinking. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him or give thanks to him as God, but became futile in their own imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Scripture says, lean not on your own understanding. You know, sometimes the biggest idol in your life is the one looking back at you in the mirror. The path of leaning on your own understanding leads to turmoil, strife, misunderstanding, and ultimately, destruction. 1 Corinthians 10, 5 gives us the antidote for this kind of thinking. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Look to Christ, not yourself. Don't depend on your understanding. Don't look to your own intellect. Don't trust in your own wisdom. Our minds can deceive us. We'll get in our own way. We don't see the bigger picture. We don't know the end from the beginning. We can't see the whole board. Trust God. Look to God. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for understanding. Look to his word. Listen to his voice. Live in the light of Christ and live in the power of his spirit. Lean not on your own understanding. And then the second part of that process is in all your ways acknowledge him. Acknowledging God is linked to truly knowing God that we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. To acknowledge God is to seek to bring glory and honor to him in all that you do. Acknowledging God is to invite God into your everyday life. I love the way that the message version reads of Romans 12.1. It says, take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. This is acknowledging God with all of your heart. This is embracing God with all that you are. Acknowledge God, acknowledging God is to practice the very presence of God on a daily basis. Submit to him. Seek his will. Seek his wisdom. In everything you do, live according to God's word and direction in your life. Acknowledging God is letting Christ live through you. We struggle with giving God complete control of every part of us. There are some things that, that, that uh, we just want to hold on to, some areas that, that we just don't feel like that we can let go, some, some things that we feel like, you know, God, I, I really can control this a lot better than you can. So I, I'm, I'm going to handle this part. Trusting God requires us to relinquish those areas to God and to surrender all. 
Apostle Paul called it being crucified to Christ. He said, I, in, in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Acknowledging God is living for Christ. Acknowledging God is living through Christ. The principle, trust in the Lord with all your heart. The process, lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him. And that brings us to the third part of this passage, the promise. The promise is he will direct your paths. Hallelujah. Oh, what a joy. He will direct your paths. What a relief from the weariness of this world. He will direct your paths. He will show you which way to go. He will guide you. He will direct your steps. He will watch over you and protect you. He'll be above you. He'll be below you. He'll be beside you on the right. He'll be beside you on the left. He'll go before you and light your way. He'll go behind you and he'll guard your back. He'll be with you. Now that doesn't mean that everything is going to be wonderful and rosy. You didn't want to hear that, did you? That doesn't mean that there won't be bumps in the road or challenges along the way. But he'll be there. That story that I started out with talking about our move to a different place of ministry didn't stop where I stopped. It went on. And I want to go back to there for just a minute. After we had gotten to this new place of ministry and after we had been ministering there for a while, for a a few months, seemed like maybe a few weeks, um, things started not going so well. Um, There were challenges. And so Rebecca and I, we prayed and fasted and sought God. And things still didn't get better. They got worse. You really didn't want to hear that this morning, did you? In fact, they completely fell apart. I felt like a failure. I felt like I had failed God. I felt like I had failed my family. And then I, the questions came. You know how it is. The questions came. Did, did, did I really hear God? Did I miss it along the way? Lord, it, it seemed so wonderful a few months ago. Everything was going well. You were moving. We were shouting. Where are you now? Doubts arise. And you know, the enemy of our souls is good at whispering accusations in our ears and stirring up doubt. And during this time, I prayed out to God. Late late one night, in one of those times of prayer, and prayer might be too spiritual of a word to use there, I was really complaining to God. I know you guys don't do that. Lord, where are you? Lord, I don't even feel like I've heard from you in a while. I I feel like you've dropped us somewhere and forgotten where we are. God, where are you? What is going on here? And the Lord spoke to me and said, do you trust me? Well, yes. Yes. Then nothing else. Silence. So I went on. But God, there's so much at stake. I, I'm concerned about my family. I'm concerned what, about what this has done to them. Lord, I, I, I can't see the future. I don't know what is ahead. God, what about my kids? What about my wife? 
Do you trust me? Do you trust me with Rebecca? Do you trust me with Taylor? Do you trust me with Jordan? He said, I've got them all. I've got them all in my hand. I know what's going on in everything. He says, but Jay, do you trust me? Yes, Lord, I trust you. And silence again. You know, God has no obligation to explain himself to us. If you don't believe me, read the book of Job. He simply says, do you trust me? Yes, Lord, I trust you. I don't understand it all. I certainly can't make sense of it all, Lord, but I'm trusting you. And I had to come to a place where I just said, Lord, I'm laying it down. I'm resting in you and on your promises. You hold all things in your hands. Me, my family, our present, and our future. I know you won't leave us. God, I know nothing has taken you by surprise. You're not up there wringing your hands, wondering what to do next. I know, God, that you are in control. And I trust you. And I had to pray a, a prayer similar to Thomas's prayer. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I trust. But help me trust you with all of my heart. There will be bumps in the road. But when things get bumpy, he'll be there. The Lord says he will never leave you or forsake you. He says he's with you always. The psalmist said, I can never be lost to his spirit. I can never get away from his presence. He said, even if I make my bed in hell, God, you're there. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can pluck you out of his hand. He says, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And the psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil because you are with me. And the writer of Lamentations says, the Lord's compassions never fail. His mercies are new every morning. He says, great is his faithfulness. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. How do you live this out? First, you have to decide to put your trust in the Lord. I'm not going to trust in myself. I'm not going to trust in the wisdom of the world. I'm not going to trust in circumstances, good or bad. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Decide to put your trust in the Lord. Second, determine to not trust your own understanding but give attention and priority to God's word and the direction of the Spirit in your life. And third, decide to acknowledge and honor God in all that you do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. When you do those things, you can trust that God will be there. He will direct your paths. 
You can move forward in your life in peace through his word, through growing deeper in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ and through the leading of his Holy Spirit. He will direct your paths. Even when you don't see it, he'll be directing. Even when you can't feel it, he'll be there. You can trust him. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. In fact, the cross of Jesus Christ and the indwelling Holy Spirit are our, our guarantee that God is for us, that God loves us, and that God is committed to those whom he calls his children. Know that he is in control and trust him. G. Campbell Morgan said, the measure in which I have trusted Jehovah and acknowledged him has been the measure of walking in the paths of real life. So let me ask you this morning, what is your trust factor today? Where are you at in all of this? Would you join me in a prayer? Father God, it is so easy to recite this verse and to say this line and say, Lord, I trust you. But Lord, it's a whole lot harder when we really think about that with all our heart part. God, I pray that you would help us to examine ourselves today. Holy Spirit, shine your light on each one of us this morning and help us to identify any area in our life where we really haven't trusted you completely, where we're not fully leaning on you. Help us to identify those areas in our life where we're not acknowledging you in all of our ways. And God, help us today to take that step of faith and to trust you with all of us, with all of our heart, with everything that we are, to trust you, to lean on you, in times of struggle, lean on you. In times of indecision, lean on you. When all around us may be strife and turmoil, we lean into your peace. When we are weak, we lean into your strength. We lean on you and acknowledge you. And trust that you are directing our paths. We trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you in everything today. In Christ's name.